reasons why agents will not do what they're supposed to do. Number one, you don't need the money. You don't need the money. Now, I'm not saying that tongue in cheek, okay? Because you believe, and I believe this to my core, because you believe that deep down, somehow, some way, somewhere, the money's going to come to you that you need in this life. You believe that. Somehow, some way, somewhere, the money's going to come to you. You're going to hit the lottery. Okay? You go buy a lottery ticket for $30 million. What's the first thing you do? Figure out what you're going to do with the $30 million. You always do that. I do it. Okay? You know, I usually try to play at about $100 million. But, you know, because I'm not going to win anyway. But if I'm really, if I am going to win, I want to do something big. Okay? $100 million would get it. Okay? $30 million is not going to do it. But $100 million, that would do it. How I wrote down here, uh, you'll make a big sale. Okay, that $2 million sale is going to come, and I'm going to get my $60,000 or my $70,000. I'm going to get that commission check. It's going to put me over the top. That's going to happen. You believe that somewhere in your core. You believe that. I wrote down here, a relative will die and leave you money. Well, you laugh. The largest transfer of wealth in recorded history will happen in the next 25 years. The largest transfer of wealth. It's the baby boomers dying, okay? The baby boomers dying and transferring their assets to the next generation in the next 25 years. Largest, largest movement. I'm telling you, this is what's happening right now, okay? That's why I beg you to do probates. You guys, if you don't get into the probate side of the business so that you understand it and know it and can work it, you're missing a giant vote. Because there are two absolutes, death and taxes. OK? Death and taxes. So you might as well get on the bandwagon there. So I wrote down here, you believe money will come, and then one day you wake up, sometimes too late. And the money's not there. And time has run out. Time has run out. You're too old. Maybe you're sick. Maybe you can't do it. Maybe it's not even the age. Maybe it's the illness. You know? You don't feel good. Just think about it. You know, some of us have colds. And we don't feel like getting up and going to work with a cold. You know, there, God forbid, there's serious illnesses out there that are debilitating. And if you don't have a nest egg, then you've got a problem. I wrote down here, most Americans reach retirement age and are living either on Social Security or with their kids. So A, if you don't have any children, you've got a real problem. <laughs> and B, I, I love my children. I love my children. I adore and love my grandchildren. But there is no way I'm moving in with them and being beholden to them. Okay? None. Zero. Hey, son, I need 20 bucks to go to Starbucks. Right. I'm going to do that? Are you kidding? You want to do that? And yet, and yet, most Americans, that's what happens. They either retire on Social Security. And somebody was telling me the other day, I was just, so this conversation came up, they were going to start um, taking their Social Security. It's funny, when you get to my age, I never heard the word Social Security, ever. In my, it just doesn't, it's not conversation anybody I know talks about. There is no such animal. Yeah. Well, well, what, yeah. well, what happens today is that as you get older, people around you start talking about it. And I look at them, well, what do you... So the, this person I was talking to is going to get $1,560 a month. $1,560 a month. $1,560 a month. 
That's it. A month. Okay, it's every month. I get that. <laughs> a month. Are you kidding? I hope your car payments are more than that. Point two of why you won't do it. Agents are lazy. I'm just not going to work that hard. I am not. There's no way you're going to get me to work that hard. Door knock, phone canvas, learn some scripts, learn some dialogues, follow a schedule, be a little disciplined. Let me tell you something. I wrote down here my definition of hard work. Okay? You don't want to work that hard, or not, not you. It's a different you I'm talking to, right? <laughs> my definition of working hard, digging a ditch. That's hard work. Anybody ever have to dig a ditch? Make good money. It's hard work. That's hard work. All right? I wrote down here, stooping down to pick up vegetables and, and the the kinds of fruit and things that you have to do, you know, lettuce, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, in these fields. That's hard work. I wrote down here, cleaning, else, cleaning out someone else's toilet. That's hard work. How about unloading a train or a ship by hand, carrying those 50-pound sacks? That's hard work. That's hard work. Not learning your scripts. When do you plan on moving? That's not hard work. <laughs> Door knocking. Click, click, click. Click, click, click. Hi. When do you plan on moving? <laughs> That's not hard work. I wrote down here, taking people to see houses. That's not hard work. Learning a listening presentation so that you know what to say and how to say it at a really high level. That's not hard work. Following up with clients on a regular basis. That's not hard work. That's telephone work. How about writing thank you letters? That could be. That's tough. Writing a thank you letter. That's the work we do. And we get paid very, 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 very well for the work we do. Point three. You don't have to. Write down, you don't have to. What do I mean by you don't have to? No one is standing over you, watching you all day to see that you're doing your job. No one is standing over you all day long to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing so you don't have to. You get a job at the post office, you better show up on time, right? Say yes. yes. You better be able to put all the letters in the right places. You better know what the alphabet is, and you, know what, you better know what the streets are. And you better get there on time. You take a break on time. You come back from a break on time. And then you go home on time, and you better hit a certain number of doors through the day, or houses where you put the envelopes. Okay? That's somebody making you do what you're supposed to do. And you could probably make somewhere between forty and eighty thousand dollars a year for that work. You don't have to. I wrote down here you need to start treating this business like a business. You need to start treating this business like a business. Do what most people won't do so you can do what most people can't do for the rest of your life. For the next whatever period of time, one year, two years, five years, do what people won't do. They won't be disciplined with the phones. 
they won't be disciplined with the door knocking. They won't learn the scripts. They won't learn the dialogue. They won't do the things that they're supposed to do on a daily, weekly basis. But if you do that, however long it takes you to do it, every day, every week, every month, you do what people won't do for the next 10 years, you can do what people can't do for the rest of your life. That's an absolute fact, if you choose to do that. I wrote down here, your choice today matters. Your choice today matters. What decisions are you going to make right now to change what we're talking about? What promises will you make yourself? And what are the promises you will keep that will change the course of the next eight months? Four months are gone. OK, they're gone. Under the bridge. It's water under the bridge. It's gone. Spilt milk. It's all those metaphors. But the next four months, or, or, excuse me, next eight months are in front of you. What activities will you do? What will you commit to doing that will change the course of the rest of the year? Now let's go out and make this your best week ever. Thank you.